of scoring a goal. I don't think there's anything like it. It brings like this type of joy that I didn't know was capable of, of feeling. And I've felt like that since I was four years old. Here we see Sydney LaRue get on the end of this ball. She's just got tremendous pace and strength, and she rides the defender. As a little girl, I knew that I wanted to play on the best team in the world, and I, I wanted to maybe even be the best in the world. And over on the left-hand side is Sydney LaRue. LaRue's got the pace into the penalty area. Sydney LaRue! I always believed in myself. You know, I knew that I could score goals, and you know, I had I had a will, a will to win at all costs. Sydney LaRue with her first Olympic goal. What a moment for her. I think I spend probably 80% of the year in a hotel. This life that we live, that the national team lives, it's not all glamorous, obviously, um, but I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I never seen a kid that was so wanting to play all the time. She always had a ball or a baseball bat in her hand. <laughs> she passed out sleeping with her ball. I had no plans on raising Sydney as a single mom, but it ended up happening that I did, and I don't know any better or any worse. It was the way it was. Do you want your hair cut off? Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> I don't blame you. She'll listen to your hair now. Let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year, it was a tournament from U12 to U18. There was one award for the best player, and it was up to 18 years old, and Sid got it. And that was a big thing. I was, like, shocked, because she was only 12. When she went and played with Canada, it wasn't the best experience. The girls were really mean to her. She was only 14. They were 19. Everyone always thought she was going to be a problem. I guess because being a single mom, maybe being mixed, I don't know. It just got tough for her, and it wasn't fun. And, and she decided, she said, uh, Mom, send me to the States or I'm quitting tomorrow. The next day, I was on the phone and arranging her to go to Phoenix. At 14, I decided to leave everything back home in Canada and, and pursue my dream, um, which was playing for the U.S. national team. Um, and I obviously needed to be in the States so that coaches could see me. Arizona was probably the most difficult for me because I didn't fit in at all. No one really knew my story. You know, I was just some awkward girl <laughs> with a terrible hairstyle. <laughs> I really grew up in a white community. I, I don't have, you know, I never understood the other part of me, um, which is, is obviously being black. The school she went to was very rich kids and, you know, young blonde girls getting all their hair done. She, Sydney didn't have that. My mom told me, she was like, I promise, she was like, I promise one day it'll all be worth it. Just trust me. I just knew Sid was going to make it and play professional from when she was really young. And when she went to the States and left home, she was determined. I dealt with all the adversity by playing soccer. You know, it was, it was the only thing that made me sane and made me happy. Sometimes I would go to three practices in a day. So really, soccer, soccer saved me. I stuck it out, then I went to UCLA, and, and college obviously opened my eyes and it was completely different. I felt like I fit in. The first time I saw Sydney was, uh, I think she was 14 years old, she was playing club soccer in, uh, I believe it was Arizona. I was the head coach at UCLA at the time, so I was out there scouting, looking for talent, and uh, 
you know, she was hard to miss. Um, you know, just a powerful young player and uh, was certainly someone I wanted to, to recruit to UCLA. Sydney's internal drive is a big part of her game. I mean, she's one of the most competitive people I've, I've been around, so she has the drive. Obviously the physique, she's got pace, she's got power, uh, scores goals, good in the air, good on the ground. Sydney has raw athleticism that bar none uh, might be one of the best on our team. She's not only fast, but she's strong on the ball. And she's got this fight inside of her that's different than most people. At the end of the day, she helps our team win games and uh, she's gonna get better. That's the crazy part is her, her potential isn't even close to being tapped. Leading into the 2012 Olympics, she was just playing really well, playing really hard. It's always really fun when you can connect with a teammate who's never been to a world event before. And that's a difficult roster to make because there's fewer players on it. She came on it after the 2011 World Cup where we were so successful. For her to actually make that team and to break in throughout the middle of a cycle is kind of a, a feat in of, of itself. Leading up to the Olympics, it was intense. Uh, I was the last pick, pretty much. Um, I was the youngest on the team. It was my first major tournament with the with the U.S. Women's National Team with the full team, um, so I was nervous. I remember Coach telling me, you know, that I had made it, and I, you know, got emotional, and she said, "Don't cry," and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, I won't." You know, this is just my dream coming true, but okay. We've reached the quarterfinal stage of the women's soccer tournament here at London 2012. The United States will face New Zealand. It's win or go home. I was an assistant coach for the Olympic team, and it was a quarterfinal match against New Zealand. Um, you know, New Zealand is a team with great spirit and good athleticism, and we knew they'd come and press us. New Zealand, they are very confident. We scored a goal earlier in the game. Abby Wambach scores again. It was a must-win game, and we were up 1-0 when I went in. And this should be interesting, Sydney LaRue be prepared to come into the game. And there was there was a few like a uh, little scary situation. This game hasn't been all US. It wasn't by any means a game that we were completely dominating. It was a little bit touch and go for, for a bit. Sid gets in on this slight breakaway and she gets this ball. I'm looking for Abby and I was like, okay, like where is she so I can pass her this ball so she can score? She wanted to play it to me and she looked up and I was across the face of the goal. Probably all the other times in the world passed the ball to me, but I just pointed to the goal, basically telling her, this is your time, you shoot this ball, I believe in you. I remember touching the ball and feeling my defender fall. And it was as if it was literally time was in slow motion. LaRue's got the pace into the penalty area. Sydney LaRue! And I saw the way the back of the net rippled because the ball had gone in. The United States are heading for the semi-finals of London 2012. Sydney LaRue with her first Olympic goal. I can't describe her facial expression, but she was just I think as surprised and elated and as terrified and relieved as she possibly could be. We always try to like come up with a goal celebration and like you try to be really cool and like calm. I was not, I was not any of those. I was wild. My mouth was just as wide as it could have possibly been. I was screaming, I was running and then all the team comes around and I'm just saying I scored, like I can't believe I scored. And pretty much I black out and I don't remember the rest. So it was crazy. We knew at that point we've got a massive impact player on our hands and then I think for her it was just the confidence to know, hey, I belong in this environment and I can help this team be successful. You know what, I still get tears in my eyes every game when they call her to come onto the field. So that goal of hers was 
It was exciting for her to be on the field, to make that team. Like it, all the dreams came true and I was sitting there watching the dream we had planned. A gold medal from the 2012 Olympics in London. When the guy put it around my neck, the weight was like, it was, it was crazy. It was like all of your dreams, it was the weight of all your dreams coming true. I'll remember that forever. When I left Canada when I was 14, I kind of knew that I had to do something. My dream was to play on the national team and, and to go to a World Cup and, and to go to an Olympics, but to win it is a whole other story. When I won that, I mean, I guess it was like so surreal, but I kind of knew when I took that journey, you know, leaving everyone to chase this dream, um, I knew that I had to make it come true. How do you spell your name? C. Mm hmm. A. L O E. Yeah. Oh. Sydney is paving the way. You know, she is different. She has these 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 abilities on the field. Whether you're black, white, green, yellow. She's making a name for herself so that maybe some kid who looks like her, who wants to be like her, can do what she does. I remember we were in Fort Lauderdale and we had an open practice and this little girl sprints and she's crying, she's bawling and she just hugs me and she looks at me and, and she goes, you look like me, I wanna be like you. And she was this half black little girl. And it just opened my eyes like with the fact that who I was um, like kind of mattered, not in the sense of playing soccer, but something that I think I struggled with in Arizona and being different. That's how I hope to inspire people with my story. It was not easy. My journey was different and everyone's journey is different. We're not always gonna fit in, um, but to always stay true to yourself and, and to never give up.